congratulations, first of all, to Deontay Wilder for winning in the 11th round against jo Johan Duapas. Uh, in a very, very entertaining fight. Um, those who listened to my preview said, I said, did say Duapas was going to be tough, he was going to be strong, and he was no bum. A lot of people looked at uh, Duapas as a bum. A lot of people used to do Harper's as uh, somebody that Deontay Wilder was going to blow over in two rounds. And I expect that from most people who, as soon as they don't know who somebody is, uh, they will make say uh, they're going to get blown out in two rounds. But um, what you really need to do is look at a person's record, who they fought. And, you know, and I was, I was shocked to listen to the PBC commentators that were saying, oh, I don't know why Do Harper's hasn't gone down. If you look at his record, he fought Ergen Tipper, who is a noted puncher. So for me, I looked right there and said, you know what? This guy went 12 rounds to Tepper. Tepper can punch. If, you cut, if you've got no chin, Tepper will find it if you knock you out. I saw him take some big shots on Ergen Tepper and was able to see the fight through. He wasn't so fortunate here in uh, against Deontay Wilder. I mean, the referee was looking to stop the fight as early as the sixth round. So um, let's get into the fight anyway. Duapas did the great, great things by, you know, tucking up tight in the first round and stepping to Deontay Wilder. Instead of having his back against the ropes, Duapas was great. He doubled up his jab. And once again, as I keep saying, Deontay Wilder still doesn't know how to block a left jab. So he was able to back Deontay to ropes and throw the right hand. Deontay, as always, we know the left jab, the big right hand. Um, impressive tonight from Deontay. I've got to say, on his inside work, the uppercuts were pretty good. So that's something that he's been doing. Obviously, I didn't see the end of the Stavern fight, but a certain this fight, which is pretty good. Um, Duhapas, I was not surprised to see him staying in front of Wilder and taking the shots that he did. And a lot of times Wilder was missing, Duhapas was slipping shots, um, but uh, he put a lot of pressure on Wilder. So credit to the champion's fitness. There's one thing about Wilder, always comes in shape and he's always athletically fit and can do the 12 rounds. That's one thing you definitely can say about Wilder. This is a, a plus point. Um, loads of punches he put out, high work rate. Um, and if you let Deontay Wilder unload on you you're in trouble and you know a few times Duhapas just had to stand and just take the punches that um John Tawadi threw um to say that Duhapas was a walking punch bag would have been a bit harsh to be honest um I would say Duhapas was pretty mobile like I said double jab and the right hand I also said that he did put, he put his punches together and he did throw some good shots to the body as well. Didn't think he invested enough to the body. As for the champion, it was a breaking down process. I think he realized he was not going to knock Duhapas out in a couple of rounds. Instead, he decided to you know break him down. He did systematically broke him down. Now, the longer this fight went, the more holes there were in De Deontay Wilder's um, makeup and game. Again, he, he pulls his head straight back from punches moves straight back it moves in straight lines back against the ropes and also has a has a very very bad habit of when he pulls off the ropes leaving his chin in the air arms down by the side and is liable to get tagged by an overhand right now you've got to think to yourself do Hapas was nowhere in the top 10 or the top 20 right this is a guy that was i mean top 30 okay now bear that in mind he's a top 35. deontay wilder celebrated like he just beat him, uh, alexander Povetkin. Now, when you start moving up into the top 10 again, as you know, you can't make the same mistakes. You can't leave your, yourself wide open when taking the throwing punches. This is a Deontay has to work on. And if you're going to fight someone like Povetkin, who will fight, Povetkin will fight small. And Povetkin can punch, as you've seen against Mike Perez. Povetkin's got to deal with uh, Mara's Vac first. So that's going to be no easy feat. But... Um, He's got some mandatory he's got to take care of. And he's uh, still a very vulnerable champion, very vulnerable champion, Deontay Wilder, because, you know, you cannot believe in your chin out to dry like that. Deontay does not take the greatest punch. 
you saw that in the Molina fight. But what you do have is somebody who fights with bags of ambition, lots of heart, um, and lots of uh, yeah, passion. Lots of heart, lots of passion. So he's an exciting fighter. He's certainly exciting for the heavyweight division. You know, to be honest, I'd rather watch ten Deontay Wilder fights than watch um, Vladimir Klitschko. You know, so it's all important, all important to um, you know the development of uh, Deontay Wilder. And of course, these fights that he's having now are actually beneficial to him. Those people that think, well, this is a bum again. This is all part of the development for Deontay Wilder. Somebody who is solid takes a good shot, will come forward, will put pressure, and won't fall over as soon as you hit him. So Duhap has caused enough problems, but not enough problems to dethrone Wilder. So that's it. Like I said, I am shocked that the uh, PBC commentary team did not research Duhap. And it's, it's, it's bad enough people on YouTube saying, oh, this guy's a bum. But it's worse when you get as a commentary team and you don't take the time or the, the you know to research a fighter to know a fighter's history those things are no good they don't help so you know those are my thoughts um the future he's got problems against povetkin because povetkin's a schooled fighter can he beat povetkin well if he lands those big right hands and povetkin allows him to open up you know think about it um, Marco Hook was able to land and hurt uh, Povetkin. So Deontay Wilder carries the power. The thing is, will Povetkin allow him to throw in punches? And when Povetkin's on the inside, you know, um, how effective will he be? Um, Wilder's not as much of a holder as Klitschko. And when you hold a lot and you lean on a fighter, you can sap them with energy. It's not something Wilder does a lot of, which is good and bad. Good because you get more of action bad because it allows a guy's rhythm to keep going when throwing shots instead of you know being disrupted all the time and you can't you're not sapping his energy as much so a good performance from Deontay Wilder do happens did everything I expected him to do um he was a better fight than the Molina like I said he would be um do happens was game but couldn't put enough punches together to the chin to significantly hurt Wilder and really and truly, you know, while they're still champion. And you've got to give the man credit for that. So it was a good performance from Deontay Wilder, without a shadow of a doubt for me. It was a, it was, it was a good performance, considering all things. Um, I don't know much more I can say. But certainly, um, the power of Deontay Wilder, as Domain Stavernas said, is overrated. He's a good puncher. But he's not the puncher as you move up in rankings and you move up against better position. I think it's in the top 10. What is he going to do against somebody in the top five? Um, Erkan Tepper, somebody who I rate very highly. I'd like to see Erkan Tepper fight Deontay Wilder. That fight won't happen. Erkan Tepper punches very hard and I rate Erkan Tepper. Similar style to Duhapis. Difference is Erkan Tepper can punch, as you've seen. Um, Marky Bay says... Wilder can hurt the guy. I don't think his power is all that. It's showing now. Tough fight for Wilder. I did say it would be a difficult fight for him. I feel that he would be cared by the likes of Fury, AJ, Povetkin, Tepper. And uh, Marky Bay says the same thing too. Right. Yeah, that's about it, guys. Apologies for the camera tonight. Not the greatest camera I'm using. I'm using my camera that I usually I don't usually use on here. But, um, you know, I've, uh, I've uh, in bed resting. I've not had the greatest of weeks so um i thought i'd do this video anyway um so those are my thoughts thank you for watching um the deontay wilder uh train goes on but uh, he's a very vulnerable champion very vulnerable and um i think personally if i were deontay wilder i would uh, start looking to get a coach that can teach defense he definitely needs a coach to teach him how to defend to get him to move side to side rather than just moving back, um, teaching him how to block a jab. Look at the swelling on Deontay Wilder's eye. That was because he couldn't block the left jab. He was moving, just moving his head back all the time like that. And that's not good enough. Not at that level as a world champion. That's not good enough. The fundamentals are not there. Yes, his jab's okay. His right hand is okay. But again, 
as you move up in levels, like I've said before, it's about levels. And the level that Deontay is at the moment, he'll be celebrate, celebrating every fight like he did then. But as you move him up in class, you know, uh, I have my suspicions that the, the run might not be on for much longer. Um, those are my thoughts. Um, what else can I say? Uh, Dominic Brazel fought tonight as well against, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, look, a guy at 5'11 versus a guy 6'7 wasn't impressive, got caught way too often. And you just got to think to yourself, what would you do? What would he have done if that was a Povetkin in there hitting him on the chin? I'm not saying Povetkin's the best thing since sliced bread. But I'm just saying that there are a lot of heavyweights out there that probably would have starched Breezel. Um, it was an okay fight, but um, not impressive. Not impressive at all. Um, what else can I say? Again, Frank Buglioni tonight. Great fight. Tough, hard fight. Again, another fighter that people said was going to get blown out in two, three rounds. You know, the left jab, the right hands of Buglioni were decent. Um, got caught too often. I've done a post like video to that. Um, you know, it's a lot of people on YouTube are very negative. This guy's going to get knocked out in one round. That guy's going to get knocked out in one round. That guy's getting knocked out in two rounds. You know, they're not even doing the research. You're not looking into fighters and what fighters can do and what fighters can bring. And of course, when anyone fights for a world title, they raise their game. So they always give that much more. So that's it for me. Uh, I think I've said enough. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments. This is where I'm going to be for a while now. Um, I won't be on Twitter that much and uh, Facebook. So I'm going to be here and I'm going to be on the the, the, the sports blog, the um, website. So check out the videos there and on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Take care.